Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I am Charity. And I'm Ben. In today's video is going to be all about campground do's and don'ts. So make sure that you stay tuned and watch till the end where we give you probably what we think is one of our most important campground etiquette, unspoken rules. We have been traveling in our RV for close to three years now, and we have visited over 38 of the 50 states in the United States. And with that means we've stayed at a ton of campgrounds. And made a ton of mistakes. Now, we prefer staying in RV campgrounds versus boondocking. And that is because we kind of prefer all the comforts of home, I like my full hookups. <laughs> I like having all of the electricity without having to use the generator. Hence the name glampers. Yes, I'm totally a glamper. I'm not a camper. I am a glamper. So <laughs> that means we've stayed at a ton of RV campgrounds, RV parks, RV resorts, and we've seen some people make some mistakes and We've made some of these mistakes to ourselves. So today what we want to do is share some campground do's and don'ts. Now these are rules. Unspoken rules. That are unspoken. You're not going to really find these necessarily on a campground rule sheet. I, I mean, you might, but I, I haven't seen any yeah. of these rules on a campground rule sheet ever before. So we're going to share with you some do's and don'ts of campground etiquette so that you just become a better camper. Yes. Glamper. Or veer. Neighbor. Neighbor. We love neighbors. We actually yes. really do like when we have neighbors. It's always so much fun. Go say hi to your neighbors. Yes. Our first do is be sure you observe the campground quiet hours. Typically, these quiet hours are from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. So just kind of have an idea of when that is. Recently, we had an experience staying at a campground that the folks did not observe the 10 p.m. quiet hour. They moved it a couple hours and uh, they were playing their loud music. Our kids are needing to go to sleep because there is a, a school day the next day, so. And we get it. If you're out for the weekend and you're wanting to have fun, you know, you might want to stay up a little bit late, but just be remembering that there are people with families, there are people with young kids. And the walls in the RVs are pretty thin. So just walls kind of be aware RV of that. The walls are thin. So if you have loud music or if there's loud voices, um, people are laughing and joking, things like that. And we understand, we want everybody to have fun while they're out camping. That's part of the experience. but. Just remember, after that 10 p.m. in most campgrounds, you want to kind of make sure that you take that either inside or that you tone it way down so that you're not disturbing your neighbors, primarily maybe families, but also people that just need to be on a sleep schedule as well. Something you do not want to do is to walk through campsites that are occupied. So right now where we're staying, we have some neighbors that are in a campsite next to us, and then we have a campsite next to us on the other side that is completely empty. Now, I'm interested in hearing from some of you guys in the comments below, if you feel like it's okay to walk through a campsite that's empty. I personally don't have a problem cutting through an empty campsite when nobody's in there, but I've heard Dude. some people Naughty. see that as a do not yeah even if it's empty. So drop us a comment and let us know if you think it's okay to walk through a campsite when it's empty. But if there's somebody in it, then you definitely do not want to be walking through that campsite, riding bikes through that campsite. Look at it as their front yard. Yeah. And you wouldn't go walking through somebody else's front yard if you were living in a sticks and bricks house or taking a walk through your neighborhood. Yeah. So campsites that are occupied, make sure that you're not cutting through those heading to wherever that you're heading, but that you walk around any occupied campsites. Okay, another campground do. 
do be aware of the space that is yours. So for instance, you want to make sure when you're putting out your patio rug or your patio chairs, your grill, whatever kind of patio furniture that you tend to set out when you are camping, that you put it in your campsite. Now this can be a little tricky because the boundary lines between one campsite to the next are not always super clearly defined. So what you want to try to do is just be aware as possible of the space that is yours in your campsite versus somebody else's campsite so that you're not encroaching. The other thing is, is numerous times we've seen where people do arrive late, they arrive after dark. And just because that campsite next to you is empty for right now, doesn't mean that maybe somebody could be pulling in really late tonight, say 10, 11 o'clock. So make sure that bicycles and patio chairs, whatever is not in that other campsite. There's nothing worse than doing a late check-in. You're pulling in after dark, you're exhausted. You just wanna get to your site and set up and lo and hold somebody else's stuff is in your sight. So just do be aware of that space that belongs to you for that site and make sure you keep your things in that space. So the next unspoken rule is do not put trash into a fire ring or fire pit if you have one at your campsite. I've been guilty of this one. Ben has been guilty of this and I have jumped on his case for this one. I know that growing up, especially growing up in a rural area, you tended to maybe even burn your trash in some places and so you just get used to throwing garbage in the fire pit. You do not want to do that at a campground. Somebody else is going to come along behind you and possibly want to use that to cook their food or whatever else that they want to cook. And you don't want to be cooking your food over somebody's toxic melted plastic solo cup. And then alternatively, make sure that you leave the fire pit relatively clean. So if you've had a fire and you still have some bits of charred wood or there is trash on the fire pit, just do the right thing for the person that's coming after you next and clean it up so that they have great use of that particular fire area without having to clean it out themselves. So just make sure that you do have your dog on a leash and if you have cats that you choose to take out, either have them leashed, restrained, or in like a catio, something of that nature, just to keep them safe so that they don't run off. The other do is to make sure that you pick up after your pets. You don't want to leave any surprises behind <laughs> for anybody else coming to your campsite. But also even if there are enclosed pet areas, those are not a free for all for the animals to go to the bathroom without it being picked up. So make sure that you are a responsible pet owner when you're visiting campgrounds and make sure that you clean up after your pet, even in the designated pet areas. The next do not is do not speed. Now we know that that can be kind of a pain in a large campground. The campground we're in right now is rather large. And if your campsite is all the way at the back of the campground versus the front of the campground, and you've got a good quarter mile to maybe even half a mile to get to your campsite, we know that the temptation is there to make those roads feel like just any other road. but. Remember, you're in a campground, you have other campers, there could be children, pets, people at any given point. So make sure that you follow whatever the posted speed limit signs are for that campground and do not speed and make sure that you just go slow. You're gonna get there, it's better to get there safe and keep others safe while you're getting there. And typically the speed limit is seven and a half to 10 miles an hour. Seven and a half. <laughs> So a campground do, that's another kind of unspoken rule in just makes you a good neighbor with your neighbors at the campground, is to make sure you do turn off your lights at night. Now, we're not just talking about headlights, although that is kind of a good rule to follow if you're 
pulling in after dark and your headlights end up shining right into somebody's rig, probably don't want to do that. So we try to shut off our headlights as soon as we possibly can when we get to our campsite. But we're talking mainly about the outside lights that you have on your RV. Usually like the one above the door that shines out away from the RV, not talking about the lights underneath your rig. Uh, what we're talking about is the lights that shine directly out and that could shine into other people's windows. And we've actually had that happen where mm -hmm. We finally just got up and grabbed some of our reflectics and shoved it in the window to block out the light because we're trying to sleep at night. I prefer the room as dark as I can get it and there's a light shining in from the neighboring RV. Yep. So make sure that you do shut off any of those outside lights at nighttime that could possibly cause light pollution with the RVs that are next to you. Do not hold your sewer hose up to the spigot to rinse the sewer hose out. What we do is we have two separate hoses, one for the fresh water and one hose for the black tank flush. And we will use the black tank flush hose to spray out the sewer hose. The reason why you don't wanna hold the sewer hose up to the spigot is because when you spray it, it can blast fecal matter, bacteria, all over the spigot. So one thing I would advise you to do is have some sanitized wipes or something in your uh, basement compartment to have ready to sanitize the spigot right before you hook up your water because you just don't know if the last person did actually rinse their sewer hose with the spigot. So now this is the most important one that we've been saving till the very end. And that is do have, have fun. fun. <laughs> Camping, glamping, RV life is all about having fun and making memories with your friends, family, children. And you want to make sure that you are making the most memorable time that you can have. One thing that we've constantly talked about is we don't want our kids growing up seeing those horrible times that we had when we were out in the RV. We want them to look at all of the times we had out in the RV as something that was fun and memorable and that we talk about these experiences for years to come in a good way and not a negative way. So make sure that you have fun while you're out there and look for those things that maybe could make things extra special. Camping journals are a great way to do that and we've got a couple of those available on our website. We'll put a link in the description below to just kind of document all of those fun things that you enjoyed about the different campgrounds. And then the other thing is, is there are so many new RVers out there this year, aren't there? Yep. We were newbies when we first started out and while we tried to do probably what most of you are doing right now, and that is watch some YouTube videos, follow some people that have been doing this for a while to start to kind of learn the ropes for some things, we still made a ton of mistakes when we first started. Yes. And we're really super thankful for those experienced RVers that saw us maybe making a blunder at a campground and came over and gently coached us on how to maybe do it the right way. I remember earlier this summer when we were in Utah, seeing another RVer that went to go put out their sewer hose in the ladder to make the higher end of the hose towards the RV and the lower end of the hose towards the dump. Well, it was backwards. So they had the high end where it should be draining to and the low end back at their RV. And so I just gently went over and started a conversation, found out it was a rental RV. It was their first trip out. And so I was able to just kind of give them a little bit of a tip and say, hey, let's turn this around. So that way, you know, flows downhill. We all had a good laugh and they didn't make a mess of their sewer dump because it was put on backwards. So another great tip, if you see somebody out there that maybe isn't doing it quite right, is to just ask them if you can give them a tip. A lot of times advice that isn't invited or not asked for is not always received well and understandably so. You must know this from experience. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married for nearly 13 years. <laughs> so leading with a question like, can I give you 
a tip or do you mind if I share a piece of advice about something I've learned is a great leading question to be able to maybe help somebody out that's brand new to this lifestyle, but help them to have a more enjoyable experience because all of these little mistakes that can be made, well, it's not just so much about doing it right or doing it wrong, but it's about some of these little mistakes could lead to a negative experience. And we want everybody to have fun, to make memories that are the good memories. Although sometimes the bad memories make for a good story. Right, <laughs> yep. So if there is something that you would like to see us do a video on or questions you have about RV life, please drop them in the comments below. We definitely read every single comment and we would love to know if there is something that is of interest to you that you would like to see us put in a video. Or if there are any do's and don'ts that we may have missed, experiences that you've had, we actually love to hear your stories and things that you have recommend people do or don't. Dude. Exactly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there. All right. You said that to save yeah. the end, we're going to give them yeah. our top unspoken rule. I did. Yeah. I guess I wasn't paying attention. When you watch hmm. this footage, you'll see that I said that. Got it. I just look at their awning. I just noticed that. What? Their awning. Collapse in the rain. Or the lack of awning. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah, that's going to leave a mark. Ouch. Jeez. All right. Are you ready? Oh, man. Okay, the next do. <laughs> Try walking in a straight line well, there. Alaska's <laughs> making it hard on me. This is what fall in Florida looks like. <laughs> Turning on the night at night, at light, night, light at night. So thanks for watching. Oh, no. Sorry. Just kidding. It's like. Hold on. <clears throat> Yeah. Come here. Come here. Oh.